four people are sitting around a table talking about baseball, whatever you like. Five minutes of it, very dull. Suddenly, a bomb goes off, blows the people to smithereens. What do the audience have? Ten seconds of shock. Now take the same scene and tell the audience there is a bomb under that table and will go off in five minutes. Well, the whole emotion of the audience is totally different because you've given them that information that in five minutes' time, that bomb will go off. Now the conversation about baseball becomes very vital because they're saying to you, don't be ridiculous, stop talking about baseball, there's a bomb on this type of storytelling works in movies or books because we, the audience, have information that the characters don't. The problem with writing stories and scenarios for video games is that we can't approach story writing in this medium the same way, because if the same scene Hitchcock mentioned were in a video game, as soon as the player finds out about the bomb, the player can take action on it and it changes the whole dynamic. And so we have to frame this scenario in a completely different way for it to work. And unfortunately, many games don't do this. Let's take a look at a scene from Mass Effect. A Turian? You know him? He's a Spectre. He was with us on the normal. Something's moving over behind those crates. Wait! Don't! Don't shoot! I'm one of you! I'm human! Sneaking up on us like that nearly got you killed. I, I'm sorry. I was hiding from those creatures. My name's Powell. I saw what happened to that Turian. The other one shot him. What the hell are you talking about? There were two Turians here. Your friend and another one he called Saren. I think they knew each other. Your friend seemed to relax. He let his guard down. And Saren killed him. Shot him right in the back. I'm just lucky he didn't see me behind the crates. Where'd Saren go after he killed Nihilus? He jumped on the cargo train and headed over to the other platform. Probably going after the beacon. I knew that beacon was trouble. Everything's gone to hell since we found it. First that damn mothership showed up, then the attack. They killed everyone. Everyone! If I hadn't been behind the crates, I'd be dead too! How come you're the only one who survived? Why didn't anyone else try to hide behind the crates? They never had a chance. I, I, I was already behind the crates when the attack started. Wait a minute. You were hiding behind the crates before the attack? I... Sometimes I need a nap to get through my shift. I... I sneak off behind the crates to grab 40 winks where the supervisor can't find me. You survived because you're lazy? If you hadn't snuck off for that nap, you'd probably be dead just like all the others. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't really want to think about it. We need to find that beacon before it's too late. Take the cargo train. That's where the other Turian went. I, I, I can't stay here. I need to get away from all this. So is there anything wrong with the scene? Definitely not with the way that I presented it. It's a pretty awesome scene. We get to interrogate this person who was found hiding and he lets us know what he saw, what happened. To me, this is a perfect scene. We get to do a little bit of detective work, and it's overall exciting. So you may ask, well, what is the problem? The problem is this scene that comes right before it. Saren. Nihilus. 
This isn't your mission, Saren. What are you doing here? The Council thought you could use some help on this one. I wasn't expecting to find the Geth here. The situation's bad. Don't worry. I've got it under control. So, we were shown that scene in the game before the scene that I showed first. And really, that scene, in my opinion, makes the whole interrogation scene pointless. Because what's the point in asking questions that we already know the answer to? Think about this. What if the scene was exactly the same with the interrogation? But, the scene before it, it wasn't another Turian who killed Nihilus. What if that human himself killed Nihilus? And then we go to the interrogation, and the human's like, Oh yeah, this other guy did it, and blah 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 blah. We, as the audience, would know that this guy's lying. But could the- would it be right for the player in the game to call him out on that? Because how would the- how would the character know that the individual was lying? That's information- that's a disconnect between the information that we have and the character has. And of course, I understand that to a certain degree, you can't control that. People can replay games. You could have the, the game designed as perfectly as possible and still run into the issue of the player knows what's gonna happen next. But it seems a bit lazy to write the game in this way to me. And it certainly makes it not interesting. Now, they don't show, I'll say this, they don't show the gun being fired. He points, the Turian points the gun at Nihilus's head, the scene fades out, and then we hear the gun shot. So I suppose it's possible that the Turian didn't shoot him? But I mean, it just... Like, that raises a whole bunch of other questions that the character shouldn't even have it makes a disconnect between the character and the player and to me going through some of these questions that we already know the answer to is like playing make-believe in a certain kind of way so that we can feel okay that the character has information that we have that we're in sync but what's the point it seems like it would be way better to just omit that scene completely and just go straight into the interrogation and try to figure out what happened. Now from that point on, do you believe this guy? Was he lying? Was he telling the truth? You don't know until later on in the game. And that would make it that much, that much more interesting. And now, an example of a game doing things right in this department is Halo Combat Evolved, the first level with the Flood. The great thing about that level is, even if you know about the Flood, it's a first-person shooter, so, I mean, you don't have... You're not in the same scenario where you're choosing questions to ask, I understand this. But that level is just as tense whether you're playing it the first time or the 17th time. You go through the level, and the gameplay tells a different story than it had been telling up until that point. In the previous levels, there was fast action combat, and... The Covenant were just very deadly. But then in this level, the Covenant are ignoring you completely. They're running away. There's no fighting. There's blood. There's dead bodies everywhere. Dead Covenant bodies. And you're just going through the level. And you're just thinking, what is going on? And the more you go through the level, the more they kind of hint at something's, something weird's going on with the, the game design, the level design. And eventually you get to the point where you put on the headset, or not... You don't put on the headset, but you turn on the recording that one of the soldiers' headsets captured, and it reveals the timeline of those soldiers going through the level up until the point where they reveal the flood. And it is perfect, because that is how information should be delivered in a video game. That is perfect dramatic tension in a video game. And if you want to think of another way to have dramatic tension, think about that bomb scenario at the beginning of this video with Alfred. Hitchcock. What I'm saying is, is that you can't have the same scene, you can't have the player know about the bomb, because if the player knows about the bomb, then that gets rid of the dramatic tension. But, what if you did this? What if you changed things up a little bit, and said, you're talking to this guy about baseball across the table, 
He can't know about the bomb underneath the table. You're going to need to defuse this bomb, but you're also going to need to talk to him and keep him on topic. Because if he finds out that there's a bomb under the table, then he's going to flip out. He's going to get up out of his seat. And if anybody gets out of their seat, the bomb's going to go off. That is interesting dramatic tension in a video game. That is how you make that scene work. So it's it's not that these cinematic experiences can't be done, they just need to be done differently. And of course I'm picking on Mass Effect, which is an older game now, and older games were more likely to have tendencies that, you know, modern games may not. So I don't want to pick on it too much. I hear it's a really great game. I haven't gotten any farther than the first hour of gameplay, but this scene really stuck out to me. It was it was interesting to watch, but it was frustrating at the same time for the reasons I've already explained. I'll definitely be playing more of this game at some point in the future, and maybe, you know, maybe this is a one-off event and the rest of the storytelling in the game is uh, fantastic. But... I did want to pick on that one scene because, to me, it is a perfect example of what not to do in video game in video game storytelling. So, if you agree or you disagree and think uh, think I'm an idiot, please let me know. And if you think that I'm onto something here, please let me know as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.